All right, I hope you have a drink, maybe a note-taking device, uh, because it's time to talk about numbers. Um, everyone's favorite, I know. Not my favorite either, but it's not as hard as it seems to be. What we're going to talk about is not super complex. Since we've dispelled some of the mystery behind what some of these words mean, hopefully that this, this becomes a, just basically numbers. So <laughs> we have to figure out how to get them and where to pull them from and things like that, which is not that hard. So bearing that in mind, this is also as simple as it gets. This is not going to be to be able to calculate the most complex thing that you're ever going to do, but this is how you're going to build up to get there. This is, think of this as a building block, basically. These two equations, when used together, is gonna to give you yardage. So if you need to calculate yardage in a particular way, uh, later on down the line, when you are a uh, more advanced weaver, <laughs> then you can do that using these same sort of kind of pathways here, but with extra steps included. But let's back all the way up to simple stuff and start with just this. So what we have, EPI, or inch per inch, like we just talked about, multiplied by your width. And by that I mean the width on the loom, the width of your warp, is going to give you the number of ends in your project. So ends, like we talked about before, is each individual strand of yarn, each end of yarn, thread, whatever you want to call it, all the way across your project. So if you were to go through and count each individual one, that total number is gonna be right here. So then we're gonna take this number here, the number of ends, bring it down here, and we're gonna multiply that number by the length of your warp. So just as an example, if you have a two yard warp, you're gonna multiply that by how many ends are in your project, which you figured out up here. And that is going to give you the total number of yardage. I know that sounds like a lot, but let's break it down with actual numbers and plug some things in and talk about them a little bit, and I promise that it will dispel any confusion. Okay, so let's assume that I have a 10 dent reed or 10 dent rigid heddle. And let's also assume that I want my width on the loom to be eight inches. Now what that shrinks to later, we're not worried about that right now. Right now, we just know that we have a 10 dent reed so our EPI is 10. 10 EPI. We want it to be eight inches wide. We can even do that. So here we go. 10 times eight. If we were to go across our project, if we were to work this up just as it is now, regardless of length, we would count all the way across 80 single strands of yarn in that project. So how many yards do we need so that we can warp to a particular length? Let's just say that we want our warp to be two yards long. I don't know why I had to look at that. My warps are always two yards long. Just kidding. So we are going to take our number of ends, which is 80, we know now, and we're going to multiply that by two, because we want it to be two yards long on the loom. And so of course, 80 times two is 160. So for our total number of yards in this particular fake project that we're doing, let's say it's a scarf maybe, we need 160 yards of whatever yarn we're using for our warp. All right. So we figured out how much we need for our warp. How much do we need for our weft? We talked about earlier how this is, you know, we have this whole other half of this thing that we have to do. And that basically answers our question. It is the easiest thing to assume that you're going to need just as much yardage for your weft as you do for your warp. So 160 times two. Whoa. I know how to write. It's 320. <laughs> So the whole amount of yardage that you'll need in total, warp and weft, is 320 yards for this fake project that we're doing right now. Uh, if you want to split this up between yarn colors, you can. And we're, in fact, going to do that here in just a little bit, talk about how we would calculate that and uh, how the numbers work. 
there's a hint, it's all the same. It works out exactly the same. So uh, let's actually do another one, another sample here with a little bit of a twist. Okay, so another fake project we're talking about. I've already written them down, so let's go through them. We are looking at 15 ends per inch. So I probably have a 15 dent reed or a 15 dent heddle. We are gonna do a width on the loom of 20 inches. And then of course we multiply these together like we were talking before and we get the number of ends is 300. So again, if you were to count all the way across, if you were to work this up just as it is and count all the way across, you would come up with 300 threads, ends, whatever. So we're gonna take that number of 300, we're gonna plug it in down here. And I've decided that I would like to do a 40 inch project. So 300 times 40 equals 12,000. And it seems really strange and what seems even stranger is that I have the word yardage written above this. And this is a little bit of a trick. You might have a situation in which you don't have an exact yardage amount that you want for your warp. So maybe it's not two and a half yards. Maybe it's not uh, you know, three yard warp. Maybe you want it very specifically, just a, a short, quick thing of 40 inches. You can calculate in inches and that's totally fine. There's one more step that you have to do. Predictably, you take this number, and you divide it by 36, because there are 36 inches in a yard. <laughs> and so what we get out of this is a number that looks like this. So if we take 12,000 and we divide it by 36, we get 333.3333333 repeating. So I am going to, for the sake of ease and not having to worry about it, I'm just gonna nudge that up to the next whole number. So what I'm going to assume Yardage, because I know what it works out to here, it's 334 yards for this project total in the warp. So again, 334 times two, and that's how much you need for the whole project. Okay, so one more fake project. This time, I think I'm going to do, I don't know, an eight dent, maybe 16 inches wide. I don't know, just thinking about it. Anyway, so I've decided that I wanna do an eight dent project, 16 inches wide. And what I wanna do specifically is break it up into three colors. So how do I calculate how many yards of each color I'm gonna need? I know how to do the whole thing overall. Do I just split it into three? What if I wanna split it unevenly? And the answer is, you just do the same thing. You just do it three times. So the first thing that we have to do so that we know how many ends we're working with so that we can appropriately divide those up in three, however many number sections we want, but specifically so that if we're working within 16 inches wide, we know how many ends we can mess with. And so I can divide that up by how many. If I decide I want, you know, 50 and 50 and 50, that adds up to more than what I have available to me. So I need to know this number first. So we've already done the math. Eight dent by 16 inches wide, 128 ends. So now let's divide that 128 ends up into three different colors of all different numbers, just for fun. All right, I have all these colors behind me now. So we took our number of ends, which is 128, and I've divided them up into three non-equal groups of colors, just so that we can do some math. We love doing math. So I've decided of color A, whatever color that may be, I want 50 ends of that color. Of color B, I would like 30 ends of that color. And of color C, I want 48 ends of that color. And if you add all of these up, you get 128. So we're within the realm of the number of ends that we know we have to work with. So now, to calculate the yardage for each one, you do the second half of our equation just with these numbers. So, very easy. 50 by four is 200. So we need 200 yards of color A. 30 by four. Four, by the way, is how long we've decided that our warp is going to be. 30 by four is 120. So we need 120 yards of color B. And predictably of color C, 48 by four is 192. So I need 192 yards of color C. And if you 
wonder how much you need for your weft again, and how am I supposed to figure that out? You can do one of two things. In the way that it's written down for you, you just add all of these numbers up, and that's the total yardage that you'll need for your warp, and so thus the total yardage you need for your weft as well. If you like and you really want to do some math, just go ahead and finish up the equation with this number here, and then you'll get to the same answer. So that's how you do multiple colors. It's really easy, just a little more math. Okay, so we do have some more math coming. I know, you're so excited. Uh, but before we get there, there's something I think that's really important to talk about. And I had mentioned balance before when we were talking about lingo. And I also mentioned that there might be some situations where you may not do a balanced weave. Uh, there are warp-faced weaves and weft-faced weaves and things of that nature. And in which case, the stuff that I'm doing here, and specifically in reference to saying that you're going to need as much warp as your weft and vice versa, is not going to apply. So there are going to be situations that you might come across as you advance in your warping career uh, that the math just doesn't shake out. That's a little more complicated than what we're talking about right now, and I'm not going to get into it. So just something to bear in mind for the future as you move along, that these equations certainly will work for some things, but not necessarily for everything. Like I said at the very beginning, this is something that you should consider a building block. This is as simple as it gets, but it is something that you can improve upon and that you can add to as your knowledge grows. So just bear in mind in the future, if you decide to do something like a rep weave or maybe crop rugged or something like that, uh, that this, this math might not work for you. And that's okay. Just bear that in mind. Mm -hmm.